Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to focus on earthquakes and we're going to look at ways of limiting uh, the damage that can be caused by earthquakes and what some of the things that humans can do to try and prevent and to try and limit the damage that has caused. You can't prevent earthquakes from happening, they're going to happen, but you can limit the amount of damage and destruction that is caused by uh, taking uh, certain measures uh, before earthquakes actually take place. Right, so we're going to look at three main areas of limiting uh, the damage. And the three main areas we're going to look at is early warning signs. So when an earthquake does happen, that we have early warning systems in place. And if you have early warning system in place, this can limit the damage uh, caused from earthquakes. The second uh, area that we're going to look at is uh, improved construction. methods. The third way is by looking at like building like awareness. So actually educating people and building awareness to what to do when an earthquake takes place and, and how you should prepare for an earthquake. So the first thing we're going to look at is early warning si systems. Okay. Um, so one of the things that they've got for an early warning system is if they've got like a, is a tidal uh, gauge and a tidal, tidal uh, gauge basically just measures any sort of like changes in the tide. Um, we have pressure sensors that go to the bottom of uh, the sea floor, the seabed and basically those pressure sen uh, sensors measure any sort of changes in the pressure. We have seismometers in place and seismometers of course are recording any sort of uh, seismic waves that they may feel and obviously if this starts to uh, if, the, if they start to record uh, big seismic waves well then this was indicating that an earthquake is, is, is taking place and it could, it could, it, or is about to take place um, another thing that they have for early uh, warning system is they've got a tsunami warning centers in many countries so for example Japan have many tsunami warning uh, centers and the reason for a tsunami warning center is if there's an earthquake this and it happens out in the sea and it's big enough then this may lead to uh, a tsunami which happened in 2011 in Japan in March the 11th and because they had the tsunami warning uh, centers this was able to issue early warning to people to maybe to, to go to an advance to uh, to higher ground. They have uh, text messages and uh, TV announcements for whenever um, an earthquake m may be detected that is gonna is gonna take place. Um, or maybe it's because an, er an earthquake has already taken place and it may lead to uh, a tsunami in, uh, in a, few minutes, a few minutes' time. So this uh, text messages and uh, TV announcements is a good way to alert people and to give them early warnings that they need to, they need to maybe possibly take cover or take shelter or, or move to higher ground. The next thing we're going to look at is the improved uh, construction methods. Some of the ways construction has improved and this can uh, limit the impact that earthquakes can have um, when they do take place. Okay, so the first one is by having like fire resistant uh, materials. So fire resistant uh, building materials. Um, the second way to um, to limit the the impact and the effect of an earthquake is by having concrete and steel foundations in the bedrock. So concrete and steel foundations in the bedrock. Bedrock. The third way that we can limit um, the impact of earthquakes from construction is by having rubber shock absorbers to absorb the earth tremors. So again, within the foundations, having rubber 
shock absorbers and these rubber shock absorbers can re will help to reduce the impact of the tremors and the seismic waves that is sent out. The fourth way to that construction has improved is by having uh, on the top of roofs they've got con computer controlled weights to reduce uh, movement of the building. So computer controlled weights and these computer control weights have to reduce the movement of the building um, when in terms of, uh, of, of an earthquake. Um, they also have on buildings they've got shutters and basically these shutters will automatically come down um, in front of the panes of glass to stop any uh, glass from falling which may injure um, people that are down below. Another w way that buildings have improved is by having um, interlocking trellis frames um, which helps to stabilise the building. So they've got interlocking trellis frames and this helps to stabilise the building in times of earthquakes. The seventh way that buildings have improved is by having uh, open areas. So open areas for people to um, evacuate and assemble uh, during evacuations. Um, so during the earthquakes, people can then go out and safely like assemble out on green space, and it's an open area, so nothing can can fall on them, so they can't be injured. Now all of these things um, are really only for um, developed countries. So. A lot of these things are hard for like uh, developing countries because they don't have the, the money or the, to, to be able to, to afford the, the infrastructure. But there are some things that um, in less developed co uh, countries, they can actually, uh, in developing countries, that they w things that they can actually do. And I'm just going to talk about them quickly now. Okay, so the first thing that in developing countries that they can do is that they can have like a attached roof. So by having an attached roof, it's very lightweighted. Um, so if it... If there's an earthquake and, and it falls, it's not going to injure uh, the people with inside the, the, the homes. They can have um, the walls can be made of uh, straw and mud. So again, if it's made of straw and wood, if there's a, a bad earthquake, this won't damage anybody with inside um, inside the house. They can have a um, steel rod foundation to help stabilise uh, the house. So steel rod foundation. A fourth thing that they can do is by having um, small and, f and, uh, uh, and a few windows only. So by not having too many windows and when they have the windows having, having them small because that will make it like fewer like weak spots um when the earthquake for the earthquake to knock when when it's um when an earthquake happens another thing that they can do instead of having uh, shock absorbers they can make their own by getting tires and uh, so tires filled with sand so by filling uh, tires with sand and um Placing them um, at the at, at the in the foundations of the of the, of the of the house, this can actually act as their very own like shock absorbers. And the last thing that in developing countries can do when they're construction constructing their homes is to have uh, iron roofs. So by having iron roofs, it's very light, um, but it's also very strong, and this can help. Um, the roof to, to, to stay on in times of uh, seismic activity. And the last way to limit uh, earthquakes is by awareness. And we're going to focus on things that we can do to raise awareness and to help limit the impact of earthquakes when they do happen. 
Uh, so the first one that they can have a, t- a, w- a way to, way to r- r- raise awareness is by having earthquake drills. So earthquake drills. So like we have in Ireland, we have like lots of fire drills. By having earthquake drills, can this can really help to raise awareness. It can help people to understand what to do in times of earthquakes. They can do this in schools, at home. Um, and in Japan, on the 1st of September of every year, they have its national earthquake drill. And they actually practice earthquake drills. <laughs> Um, on the first, and that's from everyone. That's from the emergency supplies to the school children, um, to people in in their own homes. They practice what to do in times of earthquakes because they suffer from so many, um, earthquakes. The second thing that they can do, is that people can put together put together emergency kits, so they can have emergency kits for in times of earthquakes, and in these, um, emergency kits, emergency kits they would have like food and medicines. And foods would be non-perishable, so it would last, and they'd have various medicines to help them if they were, um, if they were injured or sick, um, in times of earthquakes. The next thing that they can do is, um, is by having their their home, uh, safe. And what I mean by having it, the home safe is by having it having it like everything secure in their home, so nothing can fall or break and injure them or hurt them or maybe even kill them, um, in times of an earthquake. So be be tactical about how by things they put in, in their home. And the next thing that, the last thing I want to put down here is basically that they um have a plan. So after an earthquake actually strikes or happens, that they know exactly what to do, whether to go and head head to maybe like help their neighbours or um or help their families following uh, an earthquake and, and that they would be able to to aid and, and help the their community as quickly as possible. So have to have a plan in place for when the earthquake does actually happen. Because like we said, we can't prevent earthquakes. They are gonna happen, but we can limit the damage that's caused from earthquakes. Okay guys, so that's it for today's tutorial on ways to limit uh limiting earthquakes. It's really important that you know ways to predict and, and limit earthquakes. If you enjoyed the, the, the tutorial and you learned something from it, can you please leave me some feedback? You can contact me on Twitter or you can leave a message on Facebook or you can or on the Instagram page and you can get that at, at examrevision for you. And please check out more videos on our website, examrevision.ie. Thanks, guys.